Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Computers since their inception have pervaded nearly every part of our lives and today we're looking at a computer that was designed specifically for use underwater, namely this 1995 Aladdin Sport dive computer. And a huge thanks to Kevin Walton for lending me this unit. The first recreational dive computers were made available in the mid 80s, but they didn't become popular for at least another decade. And that was mainly due to their inhibitive cost. This wrist worn device contains a depth sensor, a large screen to display your current depth, maximum depth, no deco time and warnings on your ascent rate. But before we jump in and have a look at this computer, I think it's worth understanding why a computer might be necessary in the first place. About 80% of the air we breathe is nitrogen and some of that nitrogen is always dissolved in our tissues. Normal atmospheric pressure is about 14 and a half psi. As a diver we refer to this as one bar. The pressure when we're 10 meters underwater is two bar, 20 meters is three bar, at 30 meters four bar and so on and so forth. As a diver, we use compressed air when underwater and a regulator to deliver air at the same pressure as the surrounding area. So on the surface, the pressure comes out at one bar, but at 30 meters, it comes out at four bar. This is done because without that extra pressure, it would be impossible for us to actually breathe any of that gas in. However, the more time we spend at depth, the more nitrogen will become dissolved in our tissues. While at depth, this isn't generally an issue. But as we come back up, the gas bubbles expand. And in the final 10 meters, those gas bubbles will actually double in volume. As those bubbles expand and begin to coalesce, they can cause damage to the surrounding tissue, causing anything from mild joint pain or headaches to nerve pain or even death. This is commonly referred to as the bends. To prevent the bends, it's important we come up slowly, allowing the nitrogen to be released from our body as we return to normal atmospheric pressure. In the early days of diving, we would use dive tables in order to work out how long we can spend at depth before we need to make significant stops on the way back up to get rid of the nitrogen. The dive tables assume a steady descent rate, a dive at the maximum depth for the dive time, and then a steady ascent rate. You'd monitor your depth using a depth gauge, and you'd use a watch to monitor how long you'd been down. So this assumes that a dive profile looks like this. However, most dive profiles actually look more like these generally starting at the deepest point and then working towards a shallower point. So because of this, the dive tables tend to overestimate how much nitrogen is absorbed in your tissues. Worse than that, should something change while you're down there, for example, you go a little bit deeper than planned or you get distracted by the fish and spend a little bit too long at depth, then you need to come up with a new plan while you're underwater. This can be quite a challenge and there's only so many backup plans you can make and remember while you're down there. And that's where a computer like this comes in. So instead of assuming your dive is all at a maximum depth, it will actually monitor the depth you're at and how long you're at each depth. It then uses an algorithm to create a better picture as to how much nitrogen you've absorbed. It will also monitor your ascent rate and warn you to slow down if you're going up too fast. Should you need to, it'll tell you when to make a stop and at how deep. As a rule, most divers will stop for three minutes between six and five meters on the way back up. This is called a safety stop and it's just an additional opportunity to get rid of some of that nitrogen before we return to normal pressure and the computer will tell you when you've reached that depth and it will then time how long you've been at it before you can make your safe ascent to the surface. Let's take a look at the Aladdin Sport. So here it is in the original box. Other than saying Aladdin Sport on the front, there are no other markings on this box, or apart from the CE mark, otherwise it's completely blank. Opening it up, We've got the user manual. The user manual itself is quite thick. It runs through an awful lot of detail 
and much of which is not relevant. However, I did want to share this with you, which is that if we look at the front, not only can you connect it to your computer, but there is a memory expansion module. So the Aladdin Sport will contain up to 37 dives, logging each one every 20 seconds to create a dive profile of depth and time. And you can use this expansion module to store more than that. So in the rest of the box, we've got the computer itself and we've got a screen protector there may have been other bits with it originally but that's what's in this box now so it's a little bit big to be worn as a normal watch but what you can see is it's got a big strap to go around your dry suit we've got a large lcd display there are four contacts here that act like buttons and on the back is a removable panel for the battery Thankfully on this model, the battery life is measured in years. And that's because when you open the back panel to remove the batteries, you'll find that not only are they welded in, but they're also submerged in oil. The oil is there to prevent the computer compressing when underwater. However, it does make battery changing a bit of a pain. I'll pop a link to a battery change video below so you can see how it's done. So these three contacts act as a minus, plus and an enter, and they're used by creating a circuit from the button to this top so you moisten your fingers and then to turn it on you simply touch the two contacts and there we go so at the moment uh, we're not diving so there's no dive time and it's not given us a depth because we're at atmospheric pressure when you jump in the water this will actually turn on automatically and it turns off after about three minutes. So from here pressing the minus button takes you to the dive planner. Pressing enter uses your current data from any previous dives to calculate how long you've got at various depths. Pressing the enter will run the program and so we can see at 15 meters we could have 70 minutes at 18 meters 51 minutes and no stop means we don't need to stop on that dive we can ascend steadily all the way to the surface if you exceed this time you'll then need to add another stop in usually a few minutes at six or nine meters pressing the enter takes you back to the main menu if you press the middle button or the plus button it'll take you into the log book once in here pressing enter allows you to see the last dive there we go you can then use the scroll buttons to scroll through the previous dives it shows you the dive time and it shows you the maximum depth pressing enter again takes you back to the main menu once back at the main menu pressing the enter button will show you the battery life remaining so we're currently at 58 percent according to the manual even at zero percent there is still some charge in the battery and you won't lose your dive logs but obviously it's time to change the battery. As you can see, when underwater, the display is very easy to read with the depth, the current dive time and the maximum depth reached, as well as time remaining for a no-stop dive on the way to the surface. If the no-stop dive reaches zero, there is a warning that you need to start your ascent. If you ascend too fast, it will warn you to slow down. And if you need to do a stop, don't stop at that depth again it will warn you to go back down and complete the stop should you fail to do this or should you ascend too fast then it will display an sos and it won't function for 24 hours in order to try and prevent you from diving again Dive computers and the algorithms they use to calculate the nitrogen in your tissues has certainly evolved in the last 30 years. Newer computers can include color screens, GPS, Bluetooth to connect your dive logs to an app on your phone, as well as additional algorithms to allow you to dive on different gas mixes, for example, higher oxygen mixes or even helium. So can you still use a near 30 year old dive computer to dive safely? Well, the answer is a resounding yes, of course you can. A computer like this is perfectly good for recreational diving on air. However, for most divers, they'll have a more modern computer and a computer like this might be used only as a backup, just in case one of them should fail while on a dive. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a like and a subscribe would be excellent. If you have any comments, hit me up below. A massive thanks to Kevin once again for lending me his computer for this video. As always, this is Handheld Computing. My name's Hugh. Thanks for watching.